the heart of the design process with Passive House is using the Passive House Planning Package, or PHPP for short. And it's basically an enormous Excel spreadsheet that was developed by the Passive House Institute in Germany that, that allows you to do energy modeling of the building and, and also uh, it's quite good for, for optimization and design. Uh, the intention behind it, they, they, had, uh, they didn't design the first Passive House using the software. They designed Passive Houses first and then realized what they needed to do to make the software more accessible. This is kind of where I do most of my design work. These are the particular envelope measures. These are the inputs and these are the results coming back from PHPP. So for instance, um, the air tightness right now is set at 0.6, which is the maximum allowable for a passive house. And my annual heating demand is 12.4. If I change that to six, which would be typical, you know, about an average air leakage for a, a standard house built in the US, it goes up to 49.2. So a, a major difference just from that air tightness. All over here I'm also seeing uh, what I can do for solar fraction in the building and I get a whole lot less out of it with an inefficient building as I do with an efficient one. This is using results from PHPP to show the reduction in heating and cooling demand based on going from code minimum over here to what our final design value was. So in the case of the, the walls, we went from R13 to R34, and it reduced the heating and cooling energy by 31%. The roof went from R30 to 60, 21% savings. The window solar heat gain coefficient went from 0.3 up to 0.52, 7% savings. The U value from 0.4 down to 0.15, 22% savings. Heat recovery from 0% up to 83%, 27% savings. So again, you can get a sense from this of which things made the most difference from code minimum to passive house. The slab from R0 to R16, 40% reduction. Air tightness from 6 down to 0.4, 50% reduction. The slab edge insulation from R0 to R16 did 62% reduction but it's interesting to see uh, the relative value of these things. In the case of the slab edge insulation, it's a relatively easy thing to do, and it made an enormous difference in the performance of the building. You can make a pretty easy case for what people may see as absurd levels of insulation. And this is project specific and climate specific and code specific. The Passive House Institute generates climate data files for specific locations and, and you put that into the software you can even change the there's just a toggle to switch between to another climate data file but it's very nice because it it dials it in quite tightly another thing that I use to guide me this is a sensitivity analysis and it basically takes each of the envelope aspects and adjusts them from the design you know the current design value would be right here and it takes it down to 10% and then up to 200%. So if, let's say we had 12 inches of roof insulation and one of these curves represented that, it would sh this graph would show me roof insulation from 1.2 inches up to 24 inches. And, and I plot all the envelope aspects together and by looking at how relatively shallow or steep they are, I can identify you know, which of these is the most uh, helpful in terms of improvement of the building envelope. So if you, I mean, back to this discussion of, of dynamic versus static analysis like this, this is, what, maybe 15, 15 different parameters that I'm adjusting 10 times each. So there's 150 different building designs that are being analyzed and displayed at once. And if I adjust any, any aspect of the building, it'll do it again nearly instantly. So 150 different design options calculated almost instantaneously and to do that dynamically would would be painful there are basically three three roof assemblies on this so i've got roof cavity insulation and exterior insulation if i had any i don't i don't have any applied uh, wall cavity insulation uh, uh, sub slab insulation air tightness heat recovery efficiency and then window uh, basically 
it, it scales the windows and looks at by, by orientation and tells me, oh, should I have more glazing or less on that particular side? Heat recovery efficiency, given this particular design parameter, that would be the low-hanging fruit, so to speak. This line, for instance, this is the wall cavity insulation. So if I, you can see that it, it's made a tremendous difference getting to here and it's starting to flatten out, which means that there are substantially diminishing returns at this point compared to somewhere over here where it's a very, very steep decline. So it just helps me decide which of the knobs to turn at any given point. And of course, if I change, for instance, the wall insulation, its relationship to everything else will change as well. I think it's a very good verification tool. You, you know, it's a lot to do here, but once you learn how to do it, it's pretty quick. But you, you know, you, you put a building in here and it gives you what's been field tested to be a fairly accurate result.